Uh, well, uh, last week in the show, we had a listener write in and saying they'd been on a meatloaf deep dive. Oh, yes. And uh, we said, well, maybe we'll get back to it uh, the week after. And you said you had a story to tell, I believe, something around the 2011 grand final. Is that right? Well, I was at the 2011 grand final with my dad when meatloaf famously, like it's one of the, if people don't know, if you don't follow AFL football, if you don't follow bad music fails at major sporting events, um, it was atrocious, like just absolutely terrible. He couldn't hit any of the notes. It was like rainy and the weather was terrible and the sound system wasn't working. And it was just famously he looked tired. terrible. He looked really, I mean, I literally just watched it two hours ago because I'd never seen it before. And you're right, like you can't hit any of the notes. It's a really miserable day, but he just genuinely looks tired. I mean, he would have been late 60s, maybe early 70s or something when he was up there, but it's just, everything's an effort and he's kind of singing style like he does a lot of that groaning and yeah. stuff anyway uh, like when he was a young man uh, but now uh, he's groaning like he's just like <laughs> recording it uh, but also yeah, trying yeah. to take a shit at the same time yeah. uh, do it for yeah that's what it sounds like it sounds like he's choking the death it's really just like an upsetting performance but the crazy thing is too the clip i was watching like the band is rocking, like the, you know, it's like a yeah. fucking you know musical theatre sort of glam rock band. So they're just rocking out, and his backup singer or the woman he does a duet with has got an amazing voice, which just makes him yeah. seem more incompetent. The fact that he cannot keep pace with his band, that he can't like harmonise with this singer, it's really it's unbelievable. So my father, who has never in his life owned a musical album, never bought a record, never bought a cassette <laughs> tape. <laughs> doesn't as far as i'm aware listen to music at all like he listens to the wireless he listens to programs about farming is he like and a caveman the brought into the future like who like gets scared of the sun and stuff like that if you play music does he shriek and either the corner just no interest like that's it's yeah, not it right. doesn't even have like a firm opinion like i don't like music it's just like nah not of interest. No, not for me not even on my radar <laughs> no thanks yuck and so you can keep your notes and your melodies and your rhythm. I don't need them. All so, I need is a cow to feel. I am there at the grand final with my father, standing out in the cold and the rain, and Meatloaf is performing. And there were a lot of bad reviews of Meatloaf that day. But my father doesn't listen to music, and he doesn't <laughs> like have, you know, the same standards that he can apply to music that anybody else does in that, that circumstance. It's very much like me watching Bluey out of the context of not having watched Peppa Pig yeah. or Dora, Dora the Explorer. It's not like you're going, this is great because I've seen how bad this can be or vice versa. Yeah. This is terrible because I've seen how good this can be. And I remember at the end of it, just going, <laughs> oh, I think that was pretty terrible. And turning to my dad and my dad said this, which is the only time in my life that I've ever heard him comment on music. This is what he said. He said, was that meant to sound like that? <laughs> <laughs> was that meant to sound like that? Even he, a person who knows nothing about music, had the suspicion that everything hadn't gone to plan. So do you think if your father just like... I know that a death metal band would never be booked for the grand final, but just say hypothetically they had, and it was just a guy going like, oh, no, 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 no. do you reckon your dad would have had the same reaction? Yes. hundred <laughs> percent. He would have been like, was that Greg Champion? Like he wouldn't have known. <laughs> wouldn't have been able to tell the difference. <laughs> That's good job. Yes, dad, if you listen close to that death metal band, they're making a pun about Marcus Bolton <laughs> Um, no, I don't think that he would. Like, I, do, I just don't think that he has like a frame of reference for it's, it's none well, of it's, he would have grown up. I, he, so in the same way as like, if we're not interested in something, say I'm not interested in, um, I don't know, like, uh, Across. say I wasn't interested in comic books, right? I am, but okay. say I wasn't interested in comic books, then you're kind of like, well, I don't know if Sandman is any better than like, you know, this new like issue of the Incredible Hulk or whatever, like. You don't have yeah. that frame of reference. You're just like, oh, well, that's all comic books. And he is a bit like that. In the same way as I'm like, oh, that must be a TikTok. He's like, oh, yeah, that must be music. And then, like, I think a part of his brain just shuts off and he doesn't really yeah. 
it's not i don't think he really actively listens to it at all it just becomes background noise he tunes it out i guess well, what about someone like and i get his name wrong is it skill rex skill rex scroll fuck <laughs> Or are you talking Steel about Rex. Skill Rex Hunt, the uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. brilliant <laughs> AFL Fisherman commentator slash turned. EDM crossover artist? <laughs> Skill Rex Hunt, to, you know, the, the woman loved it. I loved it. But if he was if he was listening to that where there was no lyrics, but it was like hard industrial kind of you know sounds, do you think your dad would turn to you and say, "Is it meant to sound like that?" I just want to know how many genres we can tick off, which would be baffling to your father. I mean, all of them. I, I mean, right. it wouldn't have surprised me if, like, you know, Tina Arena sang the national anthem and he turned to me, is that, like, is that <laughs> to sound like that? <laughs> Your dad has no concept of what a melody sounds like. No idea. Why do the words go up and down like that? Why does she keep repeating the same phrase every couple of seconds? Well, I guess it would be like taking someone to the cricket for the first time or taking someone to AFL football for the first time. Like she didn't... was born yesterday, yeah. which was also an episode of Boy. Yeah. <laughs> the dad pretends he doesn't know what anything is. I mean, I think my dad probably would have liked Bluey if he, when he was like raising kids or grandkids. Like, I don't know. My, my dad might have even watched an episode of Bluey because, like, you know, Bluey's a like a a working dog, right? Like a blue blue no, healer, I guess. No, no, right? no, they no, they're in a they live in in a city, Brisbane. Oh, okay. Probably like you know somewhere around New Farm or something. like that lovely house actually. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I think. I think Bandit is an archaeologist because oh. he digs up bones. And I think his wife, Chili, works at the airport as a security dog. She's right. a nudge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's an episode where they harass a bunch of Vietnamese immigrants who are just trying to bring some fish to a customer. <laughs> Didn't understand the form. It's just medicine, man. It's just my medicine. <laughs> So while She's I was running doing border collie right. security. Sorry, I had to go back to that one. <laughs> So while I was doing my uh, uh, look into, um, and apologies in advance to the listener, I don't think there is enough in meatloaf to assist. Well, there oh, was not. Can nothing I tell you? I sorry, I have, an, I have another meatloaf story though. So I did not okay. just have one meatloaf story. I have a second meatloaf story if you want to hear it. Because when I was at university, second serving of meatloaf is that what you say? Exactly, some reheated meatloaf. So yeah. when I was at university, yes. Uh, Fatty Vorton, uh, we we raised this last time, but uh, Paul yeah. Fatty Vorton, who was a former NRL player turned entertainer, uh, was very popular at the time. And a beer company in conjunction with him decided that they were going to run the world's biggest barbecue. So they were going to try to break yeah. like a record by like, you know, have, having this big barbecue, getting all these people to attend and then... Uh, Meatloaf would play. He was the entertainment. I think there was some other entertainment, but Meatloaf was the headliner at the world's biggest barbecue. So this is the late 90s you're talking about, right? Uh, so I'm at university when it happens. So it's like uh, the mid, uh, early to mid 90s. Yeah. Well, so it's so going to probably be 1993 or something. I'm going to, you know what? I'm just going to look up Fatty Vought and world's biggest barbecue because I think it will. Uh... So he won. So. Uh, uh... Meatloaf won like a Grammy for best rock performance in 1993. So when this happened, he's a pretty big rock star. Like, you know, this is, this is not you getting the butler from um, the nanny out for the Logies. This is, this is a big deal. Yeah, this is like an absolutely big deal. Fatty Vaughan. University of Vaughan's where? Where did you go to university? Oh, university Canberra. of Canberra. But it was in Sydney. It was in the suburbs of right. Sydney somewhere. That's what I remember. So... Lost Wollongong Tumblr. This, it's, I'm, I'm going to have to go to some, some deep places in the internet to see if I can uh, work this out. Who remembers Paul Fatty Vorton's world's biggest barbecue at Wynn Stadium in 1993? So it must have been Wynn Stadium, I think, is at Wollongong, I, I'm guessing, seeing this is on a Wollongong okay. Facebook group. Um, and then they have, uh, yeah, so uh, there was uh, special cans that were made for the day, uh, which said the world's biggest barbecue on them. And then that signed down the bottom by Fatty Vaughan. So this is how big Fatty was, that he could get all these people together to have the world's biggest barbecue and go and see Meatloaf. And my friend Vanessa Stoikov and I decided that we would make the trek from Canberra to Wollongong to go to Fatty Vaughan's world's biggest barbecue to see Meatloaf play. And it how was... How things have changed. <laughs> No, honestly. You have now been... Is that what turned you vegetarian? <laughs> <laughs> the world's biggest barbecue? Yeah, well, I was still eating meat then. So I, I remember... I don't know even if we actually got anything from the barbecue because 
if you want to make a fire festival or Woodstock 99 <laughs> style documentary about an event in Australian history, 100% the number one on that list would be Paul Fatty Vorton's World's Biggest Barbecue because they absolutely indicated that like, the lines for the beer and the barbecue were like miles long, like people queuing <laughs> all day long. And what I loved the most about it was people just blamed Fatty. Like people were walking around, <laughs> like because clearly, like it's not like Fatty put the barbecue together, right? Like Fatty did a deal. No, he's the, the, he's the Ja Rule. To right. complete the fire festival analogy, he's just Ja Rule. He's the face of it. Yeah, he's the face. He's the way that you get the people in. He's the guy who's got his like you know signature on this beer that you put together. But it's not like Fatty was ringing up Meatloaf's manager and trying to get him down for the day. You know, Fatty wasn't organizing the amount of sausages they needed for the barbecue or how many beers they would need, but. They had severely underestimated what they needed on the day. And it turns out that the sort of people who follow Paul Fatty Vorton as their messiah and, you know, he was the original influencer, I guess, in this situation. Yeah, right. And they have signed up. <laughs> They've bought the dream that Paul Fatty Vorton was selling them about this mythical world's biggest barbecue, a chance to be part of history and the biggest barbecue of all time, to see one of the greatest artists of all time, the bat out of hell himself, uh, Meatloaf, perform live. And people were just mad at fatty. They were so mad at fatty. Like I just, we would constantly, I don't think we got a beer or a sausage, but we spent hours just walking around the crowd, hearing <laughs> people mutter about fatty, like the biggest PR disaster <laughs> for one person in history. Cause everyone was like, Oh, fatty should have known that you need more toilets than this. I'm like, fatty did not arrange the toilets. Fatty was not in the meeting where they decided how many toilets they would need for this event. So did Meatloaf actually play though? Meatloaf played and Meatloaf played like a bat out of hell. He was great. This was like, you know, this right. is this is back when Meatloaf, Meatloaf was absolutely piping hot thought. straight down to the oven. And yep. I'm talking about a crowd that had had a pretty bad day. And yeah. Meatloaf, you know what Meatloaf did? He didn't do what uh, the Red Hot Chili Peppers did. He didn't go out there and do a cover of fire and get them to light the whole place <laughs> on fire. No, Meatloaf was like, I'm going to make this day worth it for the people who've been here. And yeah, he puts on a show, particularly for that sort of middle Australia crowd. Like there is a lot of meatloaf love. It's so funny though, isn't it? Like he just got his timings all wrong. He delivered his best ever performance at the worst event in Australian history yeah. and delivered his worst ever performance at, at the best premiere, event in Australian history. Event. <laughs> <laughs> like if he just... It's almost, it's just reverse it. You could just go back in time and tell him, life, it doesn't matter. Just save your shit performance for Fatty's thing and be really good in 2011 because you're going to need it. You're going to need it. Now, you know, that's what he should have said after the game when everybody was criticizing him. He goes, well, it's actually Fatty Vorton's fault. It was bloody Fatty. <laughs> well, you know what he said? Because in my research, he, uh, so he, he got slammed by everyone and he blamed the AFL mm. <laughs> and he called them butt sniffers oh yeah that was that was his insult of choice now this well, the is butt like sniffers butt played sniffer. at half time that year didn't they the butt <laughs> they had the chain smokers butt and the butt Simpson. sniffers <laughs> caught me a butt sniffer but okay you're like a 65 year old man calling it a sporting organization a bunch of butt sniffers <laughs> doesn't doesn't really it's not really like the most kind of stoic noble of answers is it i mean also like where does that come from? Like butt sniffers, like, like, do you know what I mean? Like, it does... like, well, maybe like the smell. They're arrogant. They like the smell of their own farts. You're a butt sniffer. I mean, that's a bit obscure, though, isn't it? Like, it implies that you're sniffing other people's butts. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe also it could be like you know, you say someone's got their nose in someone's butt, they're sucking up to them. You're a bunch of butt sniffers. So maybe. They promised me left the world. They sucked up to him, and then they abandoned it at the first opportunity. I mean, that's where he I mean, maybe that, yeah. Okay, can I ask you this? In Bluey, do they ever sniff each other's butts? Uh, no, they occasionally do dog-like things. Like they'll yeah. shake off after a shower. They'll eat their own vomit and shit, but nothing. <laughs> <weird>. <laughs> it's a real good show. You'd really like it. <laughs> to see the full video, join our Patreon. Patreon.com/slash/tofop.